very small village, everybody, everybody else, not a lot going on until Pastor Oliver and another gentleman with the Methodist Church started a youth club. And I found that I had a natural talent for needlework, embroidery. Uh, the boys used to do the woodwork and we used to weave the stools. Youth clubs were a big, big thing. Tyler Street Boys Club for me. Lurlington Village Hall for me, for the, for the youth club up there. Table tennis, of course, when you were there. And all us kids came together and it was a fun evening. And as you got a bit older, coffee bars were the, were the thing where all the, all the teenagers met. And there was quite a few in Stratford. Uh, the, the one above Burton's was probably one of the... One of the most popular. One of the mess. The one uh, at the bottom of Pargeter's in the cellar. So would you describe yourself as a rocker at the time? I suppose so, yeah. Mm -hmm. Loads of motorbikes, big bikes. Used to go to the cafes and there was Gino's Cafe, which is in Eli Street. I put up the spikers going in there because I had a jukebox in there and all that. You've got the one coffee bar which was renowned for the Teddy Primrose. Boys. Primrose. The Primrose Cafe, that was quite famous as such. I don't think I ever went in there. There was a Primrose Cafe there. There was uh, the Island Cafe, which is now a uh, fish bar. That's on the corner of Birmingham Road, well, Gill Street. Either whether I didn't or what, but we didn't. We used the coffee bars of the, of the Blinking Mandarin. And for the young people, for teenagers and young people at the time, it was where they really developed their own culture for the first time. And the other social side, when you got a little bit older, um, we went to the pictures. As they were called. Twice a week. And, and that's where really all the youngsters did their courting. It's because there was nothing very much going on. If you went to the pictures during the week, then it was the same film at the weekend, because it was on all week, you see. So we started being very daring and getting on buses and going to Coventry and <laughs> burning up. <laughs> Which worried my poor parents to death, and I, I still can't see why. I think in the 60s the music was, was the big thing because it was suddenly different. Different. Loved radio, always had music on. I was always in trouble with my mum. Turn that damn radio down. Turn that record player down. <laughs> um, and to actually see them live, it was brilliant. So we saw the Big O, Gene Pitney, the Everly Brothers. We saw the Stones. We were lucky because Brian Jones was still with them then. Um, and Pridman. Mann. Uh, oh, so many of them. Uh, there was a hippodrome uh, um, where the car park is now, off uh, Wood Street. Yeah. And uh, they used to have dances there, with Screaming Lord Such arranged. And he said there wasn't enough for the kids to do. So he, he got in, because he put up for Stratford as a, as a candidate. It's got a lot of bands here, some quite good ones as well, yeah. Stratford scene as it were, was quite raw, I would say raw, in energy. There was a lot of what you call these teenage dances, where you could go, when you were about 13 or 14, to discotheques, and it was, it was magical. You know, you had Motown, you had rhythm and blues, you had all the American imports of soul music played by these amazing DJs. And then you'd have girls dancing around their handbags with boys getting drunk around the edge of the room, waiting till they were, <laughs> they were suitably inebriated to have the courage to come up and ask girls to dance at the very end. <laughs> At the end of the evening, you'd have gangs with big punch-ups. <laughs> As I said, it was a raw, a raw scene.
Violent yeah, oh yeah, it was, but there wasn't just the mods, there was a lot, of, a lot of problems in the town. We used to go down on the Bancroft and play football, put the coats down, a few of us, and have a kick around, you know. And uh, the one day we were down there and there was just, I don't know how many scooters, dozens and dozens of them. And of, the, of the mods or the rockers? Mods. The mods. And there was only like about 12 of us, and there must have been 70 or 80 scooters, you know, or probably more. Um, so we had to pack up playing football and run, because we were completely outnumbered. In amongst it all, we had the mods, we had the rockers, and then we had those who were involved in politics. I was involved uh, as, a, as a young communist, and there was about four or five of us, so there weren't too many of us. Uh, and the Vietnam War was, I suppose, uh, the Iraq of the 60s. And the big fear was that it would end up in a nuclear war. It became a cause, in other words, to stop the uh, Vietnam War. Now, I was the chairman of uh, Stratford uh, CND, and we organized a uh, demonstration which started outside the theater, and we were prevented from having a, a, a rally or speeches on the Bancroft Garden. So what we did, uh, we set up a couple of boats and we put speakers on the boats and we wait and we all stood on the bank while the speakers spoke from the, uh, the boats. And so we had our rally on the Bancroft Gardens, much to the council's disgust. And now uh, Vietnam is a thriving country. Um, it's having its difficulties with China, but you think, what was, you know, what was it all about? Clothes. As we got a little bit older, sort of 17, 18, then it was, especially the boys, into suits. Italian style. Drainpipe trousers. Sing winkle picker shoes. Single-breasted slimline jacket. Yes, with some kind of garish um, lining. I think a lot of people were interested in looking cool and looking fashionable. I'm not sure where they got their clothes. I don't think there was much of a, a fashion scene, to be honest, in Stratford. I think it was very limited. And I remember the fir my first pay packet I bought myself a pair of stilettos and I can see those stilettos now my mother was furious um, <laughs> a lot of our clothes we made that's right if you're lucky enough to have a sewing machine my mo we had a sewing machine but it was a hand sewing machine nothing posh like electric but you used to make a lot of your own clothes you'd knit your jumpers you'd sew your skirts but for fashion I think it was the girl magazines uh, I can't remember what they're called now, but they have a page of all the latest fashions and you think, oh, I like that. Oh, no, I don't like that. And you used to get that way. So then you come into town, go to the counter and have a look through the pattern book until you find something you liked. But as I, said, I was never that bothered about being fashionable. My parents had a dress shop and I was kind of uh, surrounded by uh, fashion from fairly early age in terms of what they brought back from London from the warehouses. And uh, I remember when I first made, made clothes and made them to sell in the shop that my parents had, they were you know, very, um, it was kind of a big, big deal. Mm -hmm. This was fashion specifically for young people that were their, it was their own, their own era, their own style. The, I think it was the Tyler Street Youth Club got in touch and said, would I hold a fashion show to be part of their sort of charm school course, whatever it was. And I said, sure. So I laid on this little fashion show and it was all the clothes that I had designed. We had, you know, thumping dance music. We had light shows. We had, I designed it in a much more modern idiom to suit the, suit the kids basically. So that was a fairly new, that was what might made the press. <laughs> it was a good time to be a teenager. And there was always music, always laughter, always fun. I'm sure there wasn't, but that's all I can remember. So I was very fortunate 
to grow up in the 60s and the more I look at it now the more I see what an amazing time that really was. So yeah, they were good happy days really.